All right, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another hour of the Jack Star Guitar Hour. Today we have some very special guests, Keisha and Chucky. How's it going, guys? Good, Good to right. see you. you Good seeing see you, Chucky. You well, you know, I've seen you guys play dozens of times in Brevard, and it's always been a great thrill, you know. And I want to tell our audience that are watching that you guys are known as a band called Signal, mm -hmm. but I know you as Keisha and Chucky because I've seen you uh, a lot of times in different places. Now, what kind of music? How would you describe your music, Keisha? Um, we do a lot of, we try to mix it up, you know, um, because you got people from everywhere and, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Music talks to everybody like we spoke of a while back. That's right. Um, so we try to do a little bit of blues, some jazz, some rock, some funk. Sometimes we'll throw in reggae. Mm -hmm. So just a, uh, like a cross section of the stuff that you guys like. Yeah. Yes. So no death metal. No. <laughs> dance is dance and party music. Right. Keisha writes a lot of Keisha writes her original songs. Right. She does her original thing. Me, I'm more into like the covers. I do. You know, what I'm saying I play a lot of covers. Right. I do some original stuff, but. I'm more into like the more well, party the mm -hmm. type well, festive music. Yeah, the yes. other night now, when I saw you at Florida Discount Music, uh, you got up and you did Crosscut Saw. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and I was thinking, it's you know, Albert that's King. some great blues song you did, you know. It's Albert, Albert King. Albert King. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, and I've seen you do a lot of blues, and I know that that's. I would say that that's probably your biggest influence. Am I correct? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what we learned first. Blues. Okay. And then the, the, your blues evolves and the jazz. The more you get into it, right. the more time you put into music. Right. You, know, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, blues is the first thing because I, I think the first thing I learned on guitar was how to do the pentatonic scale. And oh. from there... And wait, wait, wait. Hold on now because this is a show where people can learn stuff too. You said the pentatonic scale. Could you show us what that is? Would well, you mind? A, no, no. All not. right. But this is a, this is probably okay. probably the first thing I learned. Cool. My first instrument, mm -hmm. piano. You learned it on the piano. See, I didn't even know you played piano. I played piano. My first instrument was piano. I cool. started playing piano. I was eight. I guess I got about fifteen. I got interested in guitar, you know what I'm saying, because the ladies, the girls like guitar players. Right. With the advent of Hendrix. And it's kind of like ladies love Cool J, yes. but ladies love JP, guitar players. Yeah. But here's an example. <laughs> when I say pentatonic. This is the first thing I learned, and this is a pentatonic in A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that's you, the first thing I, you know, I, I, I learned, and this is, and that's going to be, that's um, essential, that's almost, you have to have that before you can play the blues, or play any, you know what I'm saying, any scales, you play any licks, anything on the blues. Now, now, if you take the pentatonic, could you show us how you would use the pentatonic in a blues uh, solo? I'm going to play some chords, and just do the scale you were doing it, but make it into a solo. So that's how you started, that's the pentatonic. Okay, now, Keisha, same question. Like, where? What was your starting off point? Um, I was uh, about four. I've been singing since I was a little girl. And my family's just always been into music. My wow. mom and you stuff. started early, I'm four years old. Yeah. <laughs> you got Chucky beat by like ten years. <laughs> 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 I've never been. I've never been to any school for it or anything. It's just what you feel, you know. Okay. So um, my mom would always she'd give me a tape recorder and she'd be like, "Hey, how are you feeling today? Sing what you feel." So I like to do a lot of free flow and stuff like wow. that. Wow. Sing what you feel. I mean, that's it. 
And, and I think that's the key right there. A lot of people really don't sing what they feel. You know, it kind of reminds me, it's like a long time ago, like in the 60s, they were interviewing uh, Bob Dylan, and they said, are you a protest singer? Because, you know, back then people were singing songs, you know, against the war in Vietnam or, you know, for women's equality or for um, equal rights, you know, for all people. And so Bob Dylan said, no, I'm not a protest singer. I'm not, I'm not protesting singing. I like singing. But there's a lot of people that are protest singers, like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. They really don't like singing, and they're just doing it to make money. Mm -hmm. So when your mom told you, sing what you feel, I think she was basically telling you, make music a reflection of who you are. And I think that you listened to your mom, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that time, at that time, and so Bob Dylan had corporate sponsors, so he wasn't going to say anything that was going to, you know what I'm saying, hurt his, uh, because he was commercial, and he was selling records, and he wouldn't say anything against, you know what I'm saying, anything about any protest. Right. Like, I don't like the war, like the war is wrong. Bob Dylan would never say anything like that, uh -huh. because that's not what corporate... Corporate America was was about right. then, and he wasn't going to hurt his um, deals that he had going on at the time. He was smart. Bob Dylan is not; he's a very smart man. Well, he said something that I know. You're right. You're right about that. When Hendrix did "Along the Watchtower," Bob Dylan said, "You know that song isn't mine anymore because the because the way Hendrix interpreted it, yeah. he made it his own. It's his. It's his song now. Speaking of that." Um, Keisha, I know you like to do like a lot of very bluesy and jazzy stuff, but do you like Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. Um, if Jimi like, Hendrix came back to Earth oh, right Hendrix. now, he came back, he walked into this studio, would you like him as a person? I think so. You know, I mean, we all have faults as people, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I like him as, I like the music. Yeah. Would you like him as much as Chucky? No. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't go by, you know, you have to get to know people. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You exactly. can't, everybody has their persona of what they want you to see, but right. there's always something deeper. And it takes yeah. time to know, know a person. Before the show started, you know, um, Will said, hey, why don't you guys do like a sound check? Let me hear the levels. And we started just playing what musicians do, you know, when they just yeah. start playing off the cuff. And I turned around and I said, is that a song? And what did you say to me? No. <laughs> no. You just said, no, I just... And I'm thinking, you know, that was really good, what you just made up. Can we, can we do that again? It'll be a variation, but yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, okay? Let's do it. I, I think it was... I don't know what it was you were doing, but I think it was pretty cool. It, was just, it seemed like it was a shuffle in the key of C that we were doing, and you just started riffing. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. We now this is for real. We're actually we're actually recording now. <laughs> Before we weren't. <laughs> Alright, here we go.
thousand angels singing ain't gonna be ages. Interesting because we just made up all, the, all those lyrics. You know what I like to do sometimes is when you make up stuff like that. It's really good to have it recorded because then you go back, you listen to it, and it's like you got like seventy percent or eighty percent of your song, and you made it up on the spot. Now I noticed you went back to the line "Mom is on the front porch" a couple of times. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a good line right there. You know, and then build it from there, which is what you did. But now, but let's say you went back and if you did it consciously, you would have something pretty interesting and it could be like kind of a reminiscent about it. growing up. Mm-hmm. Was there a mama that was on the front porch? Your house? Yeah. Was there, was there, <laughs> uh, there, was there, there was a front porch? <laughs> yeah, the, the place we were, that we lived in, we, they used to call it the bottom. So it was kind of like a front porch. Okay. <laughs> it was a well, you know, that sounds like a descriptive uh, place that you lived in. Uh, okay, so it was called the bottom because maybe it wasn't the fanciest place growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it wasn't Beverly Hills. Am I correct? Yeah, it wasn't okay. And it was it called the bottom affectionately? Would you say, or was it called the bottom because it's like some people are saying, you know, that place is just the the pits. It's the bottom, mm-hmm. or was it both? Oh, I don't even know. To me, that's just what I remember hearing it called, but, you know, I remember good things about it, too, you know right. what I'm saying? I remember music that my right. mom did and stuff, and friends and cookouts and everything, because you can make anything You can make any home. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everything can has its place and everything, you know. Not that the people there were rich, but in some ways they may have been richer than Good. Why, you know, rich that's a good spirit. point. That's rich, a good, that's a damn good point. Rich in spirit. Um, the, the, yeah, but Keisha is just a natural, as a natural, as a God given talent for um, poetry and, and, and putting words and, and lyrics together. Um, but you say something, you said something to the fact about you know, make something of conscious. Conscious, the, the, the conscious is one thing, but the subliminal is something else because, yeah, I catch myself. I'm not as good, or I don't have that talent. That's not my strong, that's not my, you know what I'm saying, right. my forte necessarily as a songwriter. But ever so, ever so often, I try to dabble a little bit. And what I find myself doing, catch myself doing, is writing something that I didn't heard and forgot about. <laughs> 
You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So it's stuck in my mind, and I done forgot, oh, I'm, I'm rewriting somebody else's leg that done already been, been written, and, and I come back and catch myself. And I, Now, it's not, you know, deliberate. Like I said, it's subliminal because I done... Well, what you need is to keep track of all these bits and pieces that you guys have, put them into songs, and uh, and you'll be surprised how easy it will be if you catalog them, you know, because I have a feeling that a lot of the songwriters that we like are probably a lot more organized than we think they are. Yeah, you take know, that out. I mean, some of these guys actually set deadlines, like this week I'm going to write three songs, and next week i got to write this amount. And, and I heard a famous songwriter tell me at one point, he said, Jack, he goes, the whole thing is kind of like a numbers game. The more you write, eventually you are going to write a couple of really great songs. But keep writing. Yes. yes. Keep singing. Keep Keep, keep, keep playing. Doing right. Keep doing Absolutely. what we love doing. You Absolutely. Know, which Absolutely. is playing, you know. It's really a therapy. Now let me ask you this. Okay. As a white person talking to you guys, does it sometimes bother you that uh, most of the black music has been, let's use the word, borrowed. <laughs> borrowed by a lot of white artists, like the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, Clapton, and so on. And they seem to have done better with it than the, the people that wrote the songs. I mean, I'll give you an example. Robert Johnson wrote Crossroads. He died pretty much penniless in Mississippi a long, long time ago. Eric Clapton played Crossroads 40 years or maybe 50 years later. Oh, and <laughs> he probably made a lot of money doing Crossroads. Does it ever bother you? Does it bother me? Yeah, do you ever think about it and say, you know, damn, that's not right. Yeah, see, I don't get into right or wrong. That's God's. Now you tell you ah, tread, that you I tread, like. Now, that now I you like. Tread, now, now you tread, Now you getting into waters. That's See, I'm good. a musician. That's good. I'm a musician and I'm an entertainer. So that's what I like to do. I like to musician and entertain people. That's my thing. To get in the wrong, right or wrong, who shot John? Tit for tat. You white, he black. No. Now, see, because if we start... Very well put. I tell you, we, me, me, and, me and Keisha, we perform live so, ever so often. We encounter some hecklers. Some no. people who don't necessarily like, have no. too much to drink. And I say, Keisha, if you attack... If you, and, and we call them... We have an affectionate name for them. We call them those hoes. We said, but if you attack every last one of them that we've encountered, we never do a show. We just be going after people. You know what like, it is? You're right. And going back and forth. And we can't go back and forth. Who's right? Who wrong? It's like I'm haters. Saying, There's haters. haters. You know, you post something on Facebook. You could have a picture of your little puppy. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I just got this little puppy. 90% of people are going to say, wow, that puppy is cute. But there's going to be a couple of people that are going to say, you know, I don't like that puppy. Or why did you get that kind of puppy? You know, my Bichon is better. Mm -hmm. So well, those are the haters. But those are the haters. But back to the question, am I mad? We love Eric Clapton. Had it not been, had it not been okay. for Clapton, Rolling Stone, Mick Jagger, when, when the Stones, the Stones had Brian Jones, and Brian Jones was one of the Stones that died, a, a couple members of okay. this, the Rolling Stones. But, but let died. me interrupt Had you. it not yeah. been for those guys yeah. to come and put some light on us, Muddy Waters. Yeah. Okay, now Tears listen. in heaven, it's wonderful. N yeah, but here's what you don't know that Wilson Pickett had a song called I'm in Love, which had the identical chords. Ain't that something? And I'm going to tell you something. True story. I was playing in a guitar store 20 years ago in New York, and I'm doing this. Man. I'm doing all this stuff, oh you know. God. And there's this old black guy next to me, and he comes up to me and he goes, he goes, uh, you like Wilson Pickett? And I go, not really. I said, you know, I know in the midnight hour. He goes... He goes, well, you're playing a song called I'm in Love. And I go, I thought I was playing Tears in Heaven. He goes, no, you're playing I'm in Love. That's the flip side of Midnight Hour. And I go, damn. So Eric got this. Make a long story short is that 
I don't even know. You don't even know. None of us know. But guys like Eric mm -hmm. and guys like Robert Plant, these guys, they got a staff of 10 people digging up great riffs, great so songs. So what are you are saying you that white people listen? The, originally, when uh, we really came to this country, it was inhabited by Indians. But guess what? But guess what? So what are you saying, man? I'm well, saying here. white people just ripped people off. Yes, we get it. They ripped it off. Oh, well. And Listen, that's, when we first and, came here, and that's there what was I, no white people. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I wanted you to say. <laughs> is, is that this music, is that this music that, that we love and that I love, it wasn't created by white people. We just play it and we like it. And the weird yeah. thing is that is that you guys gave us this gift. And I'm here to, to thank you, Chucky, as a representative of all white people on earth. All white people. You I want to thank gift? you. No, I'm shaking your hand. Listen, listen. I, I want to thank you for giving me this music. To, to giving you the music. Thank listen, you, white people, white people come from black people. Okay. Not, give, not mm -hmm. only are we giving you, at one time, and one to Africa... Africa is a cradle of civilization. At I one time on the, on one time on this earth, there was nothing but black people. There were no white people well, at one time. You may have a point. So you actually but come from. You actually just. You know what I'm saying? We're all minute. one people. You it may have a point there. You, but you also might be wrong. But no, you might be no, right no, no, because no, 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 no. because the cradle of civilization is in Africa. was might have been Africa, but it also might have been the Middle East. That's Africa. Well, how do you figure? At one time, Africa, listen, what happened to Africa, after the, the, I'm saying because of the, the earth eroding and the, the right. earth okay. changing, but everything but started in, in the Garden of Eden, and this is a scientific, okay. this is a not me, go check, don't take so, my word for so it. So what you're saying is that it's foolish for people to be racist because yes, when all it all learned, comes down, we, we may same, all have originated from the same, uh, the same people. The same people. We're all the same. And as Shakespeare said, if you prick me, will I not bleed the same blood? Yes. And but it's the, the sad part is, though, people don't think that way. Okay. And I've noticed we have to be... And people think you're times. black, and you're really not. You're multiracial. Multiracial. <laughs> you're multiracial. I mean, okay. you're, you're a last name, and you could say it on the air if you want to. If you don't, it's okay. But what I'm saying is you I have a Hispanic last name. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. And... and but it's Native American. But it's Native American. And you have that in you as well, and which shows you that we're all really a multicultural blend, like the music that we're playing and which we're going to play when we come back from the break. We'll be back with Chucky and Keisha where we explore the mysteries of life and the blues.
back and uh, I'm glad we got a little little bit you know a chance to digress a little bit and Chucky and Keisha you know I mean a lot of times people think you know well musicians all they want to do is sit around and play guitar but you know we think and we have opinions and we have things to say and I don't think there's anything wrong in saying whatever is on your mind you know whatever you want to talk about because this is the internet this isn't you know CBS where we have to answer to corporate sponsors. We really don't have to do that here. Um, so we were talking about blues before, and uh, what kind of blues do you like? I mean, there's so many different types of blues, you know. Is there a particular kind that you might like to do? Or? Oh, I just, I like it all. Really? I mean, that's not my whole background. No. You know, I was raised on a lot of different kinds of music. My mom was a classical piano player. Wow. She played classical and blues and jazz, so... So you like the classics too, you know, like classical music. Yeah, and then rock and roll. So <laughs> yeah. very cool. And when you were growing up, uh, Chucky, um, what kind of music like turned you on at first, you know, and said, "Oh, I want to learn that." You know, did, was there any song that you learned, Chucky, that you said, "I got to learn that"? Uh, when I first, when I grew up, music, uh, listening, growing up, listening to music, I came li- listening to the Rolling Stones. Really? One of the okay. first songs that I used to play in the morning. I used to live and stay at this place, young kid. Like stuff like. <laughs> the first riff I heard Keith Richards play was Brown Sugar. Uh, 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 Brown Sugar. Sold on the mind. So, so listen to the lyrics of that particular song, Brown Sugar. Yeah, I, I've been trying to figure out what that song is about. There's something it's about... It's, a, it's about slavery. slavery. It's a, that's what I thought. Sold saw. on the markets down in New Orleans. Go On Gold Coast, Gold Coast slave ships bound for New Orleans. So the slave ships were coming from the Gold Coast of Africa with slaves and, and and their whole slave trade was taking place in New sold, Orleans. Sold on the market down That's on New where Orleans. That's the mulattoes and the comes in. Right. Okay. S- Scott, Scott, old slave, and know he's doing all right. You can hear him whip the women just about midnight. Scott, a Scottish slaver. It's about a Scottish slave owner. There's the, more than Scott's on it. Whipped him with the women. I wanna, can I tell <laughs> you a joke? Can I tell you a joke? You want to no. hear a joke? One. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. All right, we got. We got to have a little Can comedy in this show. <laughs> we got to have some comedy. Can I tell you? That this is a good one because I'm saying that because that was one of the songs. And at the time, I heard that riff. Keith Richards, such a such, such a student of rock and roll and music. Right. And like I said, we love those guys because had it not been for the Europeans, the Keith Richards coming over here and discovering, they discovered. They discovered Muddy Waters, and yes. Muddy Waters had been around, and they said, man, you guys in America don't know who Muddy Waters is? We grew up, li- this is how we learned it, listening to this guy. So somehow Muddy Waters' music was getting overseas over there, and, and Keith Richards was looking. So, but, but that riff Keith Richards played and stuff just hooked. You, you, you're going to be hooked. It's it's like it's almost it's, it's like I'm selling cigarettes almost. Yeah, but here's the thing: if you smoke, we should all we, they should have been 
getting their proper kudos a long time ago. You know, the color of one's skin should not, exactly. you know, say She's how important right. something is. And, and we're all important. Yeah, and back then they were calling it race music, and then they had to have two releases. One of the, of the same song. One would be Pat Boone singing the Chuck Berry song, mm -hmm. and the other one would be, Chuck, would be Chuck Berry singing it. But the interesting thing about Brown Sugar is I saw the song as being about two things. Yes, it's about slavery, but it's also about sexual racism. In the song, Mick Jagger is talking about Brown Sugar, how come you taste so good? That's a clear, clearly sexual innuendo where he's taking the role of the white slave master who's going to visit the beautiful ebony chocolate princess late at night. And he's going to visit her late at night. And he's, well, and he's, he's enthralled and thrilled by her. And he's, so in the song, he takes on that persona. Because it's taboo. Because it's taboo. We all want what they say we shouldn't have. If they say we shouldn't have it, then we admit it's something good. So, and, yeah, but yeah. Do you, and vice versa. It's like white women. Why, oh why do goodness. white women today, yeah, yeah. they all seem to be, you know, crazy looking for black men. No. A lot of them are. No. Well, no. I just, in one of my songs, I said, see with your eyes closed in an open mind. And exactly. that's just how it is. If you have talent, you should have talent. There should be no, you know, um, like I said before, you know, and a lot of things we have to be three times better than the average bear just because that's, that's right. the way it is. And it's not, and it shouldn't be like that. You know, everybody should be important. We should all be able to do our, our music or whatever you do and right. get your money for it and get your kudos for it. Right. And it's kind of like, on look, on television, you're seeing more black people now than you did 20 years ago on television. Am I correct with that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And racial couples. They had that wonderful, right. uh, I think it was Cheerios commercial where the interracial mm -hmm. couple was in it. Yeah. And then they took it off and I was like, wow, you know. They're not that ready. Just, you know, they're, but some is ready. A lot of us have been around for years. I'm well, one. You well, know? You're, well, yeah, you're a biracial. But here's the thing. It's not politically correct to say the mulatto anymore. Um, I don't know why. I mean, you said it. Oops. So, so, <laughs> oops. <laughs> But it's true. It's you know it's multiracial, it's biracial, but and I don't really know why it's not politically correct. Um, one of them, I forget if it's mulatto or melangian. It means cursed soul. Hmm. Well, maybe that's why it's not politically correct. Serious? That, that doesn't that, yeah, it means cursed soul. that doesn't sound really? right to me. Yeah. Because you mix. All right. Because you back then that's the way it was. Mm. Right, yeah, it's just I'm saying a lot of the Jim Crow stuff hasn't gone yeah. away. America, yeah, you, you live know. in two worlds. Yeah. At least back then. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to continue. You know, anybody can sit up here and play songs. Can we you, can do, you know, Thrill is Gone. Dire Stra you know, um, but, you can play Dire Straits. So what's that? What's that? So money for nothing. Right. I'm a, money for nothing, baby. We could do that, but we're not going to do that. You don't know that? Because I don't even like Dire Straits. You don't <laughs> like Mark Knopfler? No, nah, he, <laughs> he just annoys me. Why are you back? <laughs> the chicks for free. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, that's right. And, oh, and Keisha's with me on that. She now, doesn't see, like. You would, see, now y'all hating the play. See, y'all hating uh -huh. the play. And what you need to hate <laughs> is again. Mark Knopfler invented the chick for free. Now, Whatever. that I'm was a chick. A wall right here but I'm minutes. saying, but that was around <laughs> before he even was a baby, before he was even born. Yeah. M music was a, Women like music. Why do you think I play music? To get some money. Wait a minute. Are you women saying like, women like music? Women like music and musicians. Okay. I play music for my soul. That's I play music. Thank for you. Flesh and my soul. Okay. 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 I play music for my soul too. And when I can some beautiful women sit me found my soul show feel like my soul. My soul is show is All right. Now we're getting some honesty on this show. That's what I like. Uh, honesty. I think he's moving in with you, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Y'all don't know. Since the last time y'all see me, I done been in New York and back. Well, I'll yeah. tell you, honestly, yeah, I, Arizona I, think, I think there are a lot of guitar players that got into it, you know, because of, you know, wanting to meet women yeah. and all that stuff. But they kind of fall back, and eventually they become plumbers or carpenters or whatever they're going to be. The Rodriguez. guys... Like who? Rodriguez was amazing. He Rodriguez. Was Bob right, the guy that in Chicago. New yeah, hero. But Him and uh, what was it? Rosetta, Sister Rosetta. Right. Sister Rosetta Thorpe. But the point that I'm making is this, is that the people that do music for the right reasons 
30, 40, 50 years later, they're still doing it because they're doing it because they love the music. music. And I'm one of those people, and I believe, Chucky, even though you said what you said, About I think you're doing music because you really... Love music. Yeah, yeah you, love, you, you love music, so, but here's so the So don't truth. spoil it by disagreeing no, 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 with me. Truth. No, 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 don't agree. I totally agree with you. No, he just likes but because to, of he music... He just likes to get a reaction No, from because yeah, of I music... Like, <laughs> no, listen, I totally agree with what you're saying, but because of music has elevated us all. I have come from this thing without music and stuff. This is who I would have been. Because of music, this is who, who I can be or who I am. Because of music, you're a lot more personable. Think what Jack Star... Think what Jack Star personality be like. Take away his gift for guitar playing. It would be a nightmare. So, take, a, <laughs> take, <I'll> away <laughs> guitar, take away minus the guitar. Where would you be? We I'd, would I'd be. Ready. I'd be like some guy uh, walking the streets, uh, cursing at young people. You'd be doing I'd be like walking down the street, going, "Damn that stupid young guy!" <laughs> you know, I'd be muttering under my breath. Like a couple would go by. Yeah, yeah, that, that stupid <laughs> young. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's true, and, and it's funny you mention that because I was reading a thing on Van Halen, and the guys in the band were saying, you know, Eddie, if you took away his guitar, he'd have no personality. Wow. And I was thinking, wow, what a horrible thing to say about a bandmate. But they felt that way. Sammy Hagar said that, and, just and they just said the guy's got no personality without that guitar. So I agree with you. I think we're blessed to be able to do this. And on that note, I want you to grab that guitar that's next to you, and I want to know if you can sing, Keisha, uh, both of you, this song by B.B. called Every Day I Have the Blues. Oh, I've heard it. But no, I, do it I do it in the key of G, like, every day, every day I have the blues, every day, yeah, belt it out. Darling, always oh, you I hate to lose. Nobody loves me, not even my own mom, and she's right here. Thank you. 
you belt out some stuff now. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of times, Keisha, you like to hold back. But I don't like to hear you hold back. I want you to think like Tina Turner. You don't do nothing nice and easy. You got to do it rough and powerful. All right, are you ready? player and a great drummer in the house and we're going to bring him out and we're going to give the people the full effect of the blues power.
Okay. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We got some great, great uh, people that have just joined us. We got Will on the drums. Will, thanks for joining Chucky, Keisha, and myself. And we got Dominic on the bass. And I think uh, we're going to do Rock Me Baby. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Won't you, won't you rock me all night long? Oh, want you to rock me, baby, oh, like my, like my packing good, no phone. Roll me, daddy, like you. Like your royal wagon wheel Roll me daddy more Like the Like your royal wagon wheel Oh, want you to roll me, baby Oh, you don't know how good that I'm 
Jason, Chucky, everyone. This has been a great show. Please come back next week. Thanks to Dominic on the bass, Will on the drums, and Chucky and Keisha. You guys are awesome, man. You guys are awesome, man.